Uh, back to for a moment to uh, uh, Soma. In the Hindu religion, the Hindus, uh, 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 the Red Vedas are full of sex worship, uh, uh, much more so than Christianity, uh, and much more graphic as well. Um, Shiva was having sex with his consort uh, up on top of a mountain, and they were having such passionate sex that the weight was compressing the air below, and the gods below were in panic, and they came running to, uh, to, to try to put an end to this to save their own lives. So uh, they run up into the mountain, and Shiva stands up, and he says, he stands up, and he's still fully erect, and he says, we will stop, but who will take my seed? Who will eat it? And Shiva, with his fiery penis here, and his fiery seed, who will take my fiery seed? And the gods all look to Agni. They said, Agni is our fire god. He is the only one hot enough to handle this. And Agni steps up and says, certainly, I can handle this. And he does. And the story is that this, this causes Agni to have great bliss. So we have the story of, of, of eating the, the red-tipped, the red-capped, the fiery red uh, seed and having great bliss. So what's happening in the uh, depiction here, this is Agni drinking the seed. So because the semen and because the urine both come from the same place, this was interchangeable in the stories. So now we have urine being drunk from the cup. So Agni here is being impregnated by the seed of Shiva. This image here just about shows the whole process of from beginning to end over here you have the rain, which appears to be falling in what looks like a spoon. Inside the spoon you have the Ouroboros biting its own tail with the wings on top. Next to it you have the Hermiculus urinating into the water, and the water is being burned or boiled and recycled up. And on the far right we have the Caduceus completing the alchemical process of the drugs from the beginning to the very end, and of course the Caduceus is our symbol of drugs. That, that picture was found in Alchemy and Mysticism and described in Magic Mushrooms, uh, Religion and Alchemy by Clark Heinrich. So we have the act of sex depicted with the mushroom. So much of ancient mythology was based on sex and fertility worship. And here we have the hermaphroditic symbol of the unification of sex in the mushroom itself. The staff for the stem of the mushroom joining up with the female uterus or the, the cap of the mushroom, and which is also representing the breast of the female portion of the mushroom. Once the cat begins to separate away, the mushroom is no longer considered only male. Uh, and in the stories, the male portion, or Adam, existed before Eve, or existed before the eaves of the mushroom were showing. So here's another excellent representation of the sex symbology of the mushroom. Here we have the penis coming up, joining with the uh, womb of the cap of the mushroom. And uh, next to it, we see the exact same thing, exactly where this idea came from, from the imagery of the mushroom. What the ancients did was they looked at this mushroom and portrayed it in many different angles and anthropomorphized those angles into our gods and deities today. Here we have a representation of the cock and the cock from the Catholic Church. This is found in Acharya S.'s book. Uh, the, once again, the mushroom or the, the penis representing the mushroom and fertility. And this is a bronze sculpture hidden in the Vatican treasury. It's actually a symbol of St. Peter or Jew Peter. Here we have Hermes, the Greek god, and Mercury, once again with the Caduceus. Caduceus representing drugs, and he's putting something, anointing the head of his penis with the anointing oils. And the Caduceus, or the symbol of drugs on the other side, very much tells the story of exactly what he's anointing himself with. The Rosicrucian phallic cross, you can see the Thesica Pisces, or the womb here with the three penises coming out on either side and then the uh, testicles on the bottom. Golden phallic cross found in Italy in the early 19th century. Yeah, the symbol of, of, of the uh, snake being crushed, or the head of the snake being crushed, uh, separating the tail from the head uh, is the act of this unification, separating the head from the tail. Uh, at this growth in our, of our life, we are a hermaphrodite. We don't decide what sex we're going to be for another 49 days after, after uh, uh, conception. So there is this period of time when we are either or both. We are split. And this is in alchemy, the divine hermaphrodites being born from the cosmic egg. Of course, one is red and one is white, and the background is black. The colors of the great work are red, white, and black. The colors of the mushroom are red, white, and black, born from the cosmic egg, one male and one female, both wearing a crown. Nothing but a sash. 
So the hermaphrodite is 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 very important to understand that um, this isn't an accidental freak of nature. This is a symbol. The wings, the male and female, the crown at the top, the bulbous base. So this is all uh, uh, symbolic of the mushroom and its hermaphroditical stages. This is another picture of the hermaphrodite. Uh, behind us we have the phoenix showing us that this is the amanita or the ouroboros recycling itself over and over again. Below we have the snakes on the primordial mound. Up here the snakes are ready to be consumed. The poison from the snakes are ready to be consumed. This is the yin yang of the hermaphrodite, the positive and the negative. Now if you strip away everything but the symbol, you have the bulbous base with the skirt, the striations, the crown at the top, the Amanita muscaria. This is Shiva, as we described before. Uh, Shiva is the, a hermaphrodite, both male and female. Shiva had the uh, one breast, the one testicle, and the penis. Here we have Masonic symbology, the eagle, double-headed eagle, the pyramid or sun symbology on the top, the primordial mound with the ribbon or representing the serpents around the primordial mound. So you have the wings above and the serpent below and an alchemical representation under, under Freemasonry. This is uh, Splendor Solus. This is a depiction in alchemy of, and this is telling of a lot of things. The reflection of the sun um, holding the cosmic egg. This is Sol and Luna. Sol is always red and Luna is always white. So we have the red and the white wings. We have the skirt and we're standing on one or exposing one leg in the forest. So we'll take you through this here and show you uh, how this is depicted in the mushroom. Here we have the skirt, complete with a dangling gold at the bottom. The shield. Uh, we also have a ladder that is climbed. You climb the ladder to the heavens, Sol and Luna. Sol and Luna have red and white wings, as the mushroom has red and white wings. Sol and Luna, one is red and one is white. And what are they holding? But the cosmic egg? It's very uh, peculiar how their, how their hands are placed around this egg. The fingers are making it into a mushroom. Here once again we have the hermaphroditic properties of the mushroom. We have the womb at the top with the penis. We have the hermaphrodite above in this picture here with the caduceus below representing drugs. Over here, once again, the penis <clears throat> with the sun disc or the cap of the mushroom on the top. Of course, you have the sun in the sky and an obelisk on the ground. So, again, we have the above and below. We are going to join together in this unification. We join names at uh, our, our marriage. Uh, here, it's interesting that he's only showing one leg. I don't know if that was done on purpose or not, but we have this hermaphrodite now. The two are one. Here we see Eve being born from the side of, of Adam, and why is it in ancient mythology that Eve is said to be born from Adam? Why is it that, you know, since we know that women bear children, why would, why would these ancient stories try to tell us that Eve was born from Adam instead of the other way around? Part of it is the suppression of the female, which we talked about with Libertus, but another part of it is that with the development or with the growth cycle of the mushroom, the male phallic or the, or the penis stage of the mushroom exists before the cap begins to open up, revealing the female womb and breast. So literally what is happening is if I'm standing here with my arms at my side and with my arms down and I am the mushroom, with my arms down, I am only the male portion of the mushroom. But as soon as the, the cap begins to pull away or as soon as as soon as my arms raise up, forming the cap of the mushroom, I, I am pulling away or, or being born from the rib of Adam. The female is being pulled away and is being born from the side of the, of the mushroom in the hermaphroditic representation. So, so the mushroom cap opens up or, or Eve is being born from the, from the side of, of Adam or from the side of the, the male phallic first. And then the cap continues to open up and raise its arms up into the Holy Grail in complete unification and representation of the cycle of, of life and fertility. That's why this posture or this stance is so important. That's why we see Krishna doing it and Jesus doing it and Libertas standing like this. Uh, uh, this is the Holy Grail stage of the mushroom. So Eve is born from the side of Adam. Eve is born from Adam's rib. Out of Adam's rib comes Eve, the female part of the mushroom, the part of the mushroom that we consume. So out of the rib comes the enlightenment. 
Jesus hanging on the cross is stabbed in the rib, and out of his rib comes the blood that is collected into the Holy Grail. So out of the rib, again, comes the enlightenment. Here's Jesus having been stabbed. Jesus is the, uh, the, the winemaker. Standing here, the river of his blood flowing, and they're capturing it into the Holy Grail to be consumed. Capturing the blood. So, we drink the blood. We drink the blood of this deity, the red capped deity. In 2 Corinthians 3, 16 through 17, it says, Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Very interesting statement. And if you take that statement and put it into our modern language, it might sound like this. When the cap of the Amanita turns upward and the veil drops, there you will find the spirit of the Lord. And there you will also find freedom. 